Miguel from Grumo here, and I'm going to show you how to create a cocktail mobile app. Now, the app itself is not that difficult to create. You're basically listing a bunch of cocktails made of a bunch of ingredients. But what makes this app unique is that you can enter a series of ingredients that you have at home and based on the ingredients that you have available, the app will show you which cocktails you could create. How cool is that? And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the logic behind that search functionality without coding using Glide. Let's do it. You can get a copy of this mobile app template at grumo.com slash cocktail app. So here's the app inside the Glide app editor, and I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how the app looks right now without the search. So basically we have a few tables, a users table, an ingredients table, a cocktails table with 10 different cocktails, then a table where we're connecting cocktails to ingredients, and then a select table basically to enter units and then uh, whether the ingredient is a drink or a garnish. And with these tables, then we can list all the cocktails and all the ingredients inside each of the cocktails and then other cocktails that are using that specific ingredient, like in this case, sweet vermouth is being used in three different drinks. The problem that we're trying to solve now is how could we create a search that would return only the cocktails that we can create based on the ingredients that we have at home, right? So how do we do that? The first thing we're going to do is create a search tab. So for that, we're going to go to our database and we're gonna create a new table. We're gonna call it search. As soon as we've created that table, we can now create a new tab by clicking the plus button under the tab section here. And then we're going to pull the data from the search table. Obviously there's nothing there yet. We're gonna call this search and give it a search icon, a search icon. There you go, something like this. Perfect. And we're going to select a detailed type of view. So it just looks like a page. And now we can go back to the table and we're gonna to need to create one row. And I'm going to give this row a value, a unique ID. It's gonna be search ID. And it's going to be the number type, precision one, no group separator. And I'm gonna give it a value of one. It's very helpful for all rows in tables to have unique identifiers because you'll be using that unique identifier to link tables with tables, to pull data between tables, basically. And we're gonna call this search. Now, what we want to do is be able to enter several ingredients and based on the ingredients that we enter, get the cocktails that we could create. So let's say that we want to be able to enter up to five possible ingredients. So for that, we're gonna create five columns. I'm gonna call them item one for the first item that we're searching, right? And it's going to be of the type, type text and it's gonna be user specific, which means this search is only going to affect the current user and not all the users that are using the app. Because if you don't click this, what happens is that the search is going to apply to everybody that is currently using the app and we don't want that, right? So we're gonna click done and I'm going to repeat this four more times. That's gonna be item two. Also a user specific column, item three, and I'm going to duplicate this and item four, and then item five. With this, now we can create the search. Let me delete this component, the title, and now we're going to create five search inputs. And for that, we're gonna click on the plus button and type uh, choice, okay and we're going to pull the data for this choice from the ingredients because we're gonna look for ingredients. What we're gonna be entering here is the ingredients that we have at home. So we're gonna pull uh, all the ingredients and then select it from here. So you can see now we have all the ingredients here and we could already start selecting that, right? And now we want to decide where we're saving this component and we wanna save it to the item one, okay? and the values are going to be the raw ID. We're gonna save that and we're gonna display it as a name, okay? So now we know that when we select a component, let's say sweet vermouth on the table, that's going to write the raw ID, the unique identifier for sweet vermouth, which is this big string, it's gonna be 
written and saved under the item one column. And we overwrote by mistake the name of the screen. This is just to have a reference. We're not gonna use this value anywhere, but we're just gonna leave it here. And then we can do that for the rest of the items, okay? And so we're gonna duplicate this four more times. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna select that we're gonna write to item two, item three, item four, and item five. Let's test that the choice components are writing to the correct column. So I'm just gonna select other ingredients here, okay? And making sure that the unique identifiers for each of these ingredients are written into the corresponding columns. And we can see here, that's correct. So that's working. Now we can delete the labels of the components. We're, gonna, we're not gonna need them, right? Uh, I'm just gonna delete them, okay? Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is to create a button to clear all our selections. So let's just click the plus icon here and search for button. And we're going to call this button clear. And we're going to set the action to set the column values of this table. We're going to clear them all. So clear value one, clear value two, clear value three, clear value four, and clear value five. And then when we click the clear button, that should clear all the values. Perfect. And now is when the magic starts. So how do we do this matching of ingredients with possible cocktails that we can create? Well, we're gonna go here again to our search table and we're going to create an array that combines the five possible ingredients that we're searching for. And for that, we're gonna call this search R for array. And we're going to use a computed column called make array. And we're going to add the five items here, four and five. And the items are going to be one, two, three, four, five. So now when we select five items, right? What's happening is that we're actually building a search array. We go here to our table and you can see here we generated an array with the five items that we are searching for. The next thing we're going to do is to pull this array inside the cocktails table. And to do that, we're going to create a single value column. We're gonna call it search array. And basically with this single value computed column, we're gonna grab the first row of the table search for the search array. And that pulls the search array for all the available cocktails. Now that we have that, we can compare the search array with the ingredients inside each cocktail. And to do this conversion, we need to convert this relation into a comma separated value column by using the join list computed column. And we're going to join the list inside the related ingredients for each cocktail. And we want to put together all the ingredients separated with a comma. Once we've done that, let me rename this to uh, ingredients list we're going to use the split text computed column to create an array of all the ingredients for each cocktail. And this is going to be ingredients array. And we're going to use a split text computed column. And the text is going to be the ingredients list. And now we're creating each item separated with a comma. And now you can see how we've created an array with each of the ingredients for each cocktail. The next thing we need to do is subtract from our ingredients array, so the total amount of ingredients that each cocktail has, our search array. Now, if we have a search where all the items are inside the ingredients array, the resulting subtraction is going to yield zero items, and that would be a perfect match. And anything else would be an imperfect match. So let's say that you only have one ingredient inside your search that belongs to one of the cocktails, then you will have only one match. Let me show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna create another array, and it's going to be called 
not match a array because this is an array where we're going to subtract. Let me do this subtraction. So we're going to use another computed column called remove elements. And what we're going to remove is from the ingredients array, we're going to remove the search array. Okay. And this resulting array is going to contain all the ingredients that have not been matched. So when there's zero elements in this array, that means that we've matched all the ingredients. And that means that we have all the ingredients for that specific cocktail. Let me show you a cocktail that I know that only has two ingredients, which is a Bellini, which has two ingredients. One is called white peach puree and Prosecco. Okay, so now if we go to our cocktails table, we'll be able to see that one cocktail, the Bellini, has a not match array that has zero matches, which means this cocktail has all the elements in our search array. Now that we have this array, we can generate a series of numeric columns that will allow us to filter out just the cocktails that have one or more of the ingredients that we enter in our search. The first thing we're going to do is count the total ingredients that each cocktail has. So for that, we're going to use a roll up column and it's going to be ingredients count and it's going to be a roll up column. We're going to add the total ingredients inside each cocktail. Now we're going to duplicate this because we're going to count the elements inside the not match array. So not match count and we're going to count the not match array items. And then we're going to subtract the ingredients with the not match to get the matched, the match items, the number of matched items. So we're going to use a math column for that. Match count, a math column, A minus B, where A is going to be the ingredients count, B is going to be the not match count, precision one, no group separator. Okay. And then we can see here for our Bellini, by doing that subtraction, we can see we've actually matched both ingredients and that's our match count. And this is all we need to display cocktails that match our search. So let's do that right now. Let's create a new component called inline list, where we're going to pull the data from the cocktails table. So from the cocktails table and the title is going to be that, uh, uh, the image is going to be cocktail photo, and we can make this into titles, two items per column, make them square, and we want the actual text in the left corner there, and there we go. So right now we have a list with all the cocktails. Let me just rename this to cocktails. So the next thing we need to do is apply a filter by going to options and we're going to filter the data based on the match count that is greater than zero. So anything that is greater than zero is going to display. And you can see right now we have one result, but let's say that we were, let's clear this and uh, we're going to select sweet vermouth. And we can see that there's three cocktails that have sweet vermouth as one of the ingredients. So this is fantastic. It's already working. Now, if we want to get a little bit fancier, we would want to display first the cocktails that have the most amount of matches. And for that, what we can do is order them by the match count. So if we click here on the inline list and then we go to options, we can sort the data by the match count from high to low, right? And so let's see, this uh, blood and sand has also scotch whiskey. So let me add here also scotch, scotch whiskey. And it should be always shown as the first result. Okay. Now it'd be nice to have a visual indicator showing us how many ingredients have we matched per cocktail. And to do that, what we can do is go to our cocktails and then we can create a percentage column. We're going to call this match percentage and it's going to be a math column where we're going to do A divided by B times 100 where A is going to be 
the match count, B is going to be the ingredients count, precision one, no group separator, and we're going to add the percentage signed. And now we can see how we have a percentage value. Uh, we also may want to display how many ingredients out of the total ingredients we've matched. And for that, what we can do is create a template column. We're gonna call this match TXT. It's going to be a template type of column where we're going to see X, Y of Z or Z if you're in the United States. And we're gonna replace those values with the corresponding values that we want to put in there, which are the percentage, the match count, and the total ingredients. Okay, now that we have that, we can display this inside our results. We're just gonna select the inline list and then under details, we're going to pull the match TXT column and then we can see how our results are ordered by the percentage match, okay? So if I clear this again, and then we grab the Berlin ingredients, which were white peach puree and Prosecco, guess what? We have a 100% match because this cocktail only has two ingredients and we match both. Well, and that takes care of the search logic. The final thing that is optional is to clean up this page so we have a little indicator for our users. It's always good to explain our users how to use a screen. And for that, we can use a hint component and drag it to the top. And then uh, we're just gonna enter this title and center it and basically say, enter up to five ingredients to find which cocktails you can prepare with them. Then we don't really need to display all the inputs all the time. So we can display them only when the previous dropdown has something selected already or when the dropdown itself has something selected as well. So the way that would work is we had a condition saying if this item is not empty or the previous item, so item four is not empty, then display, okay? The same thing for item four, this would be if this item is not empty or the previous item is not empty, this, that's when we would display them. And the same for here, item three is not empty or item two is not empty. And for item two, display when item two is not empty or item one is not empty. And item five, this should be actually be or. So now we can test this. And let's clear everything that you can see when we clear it, we're only showing one input because maybe we're just looking for an ingredient, let's say sweet vermouth, right? As soon as we have something selected, if we want to add a second ingredient, we display the second drop down, and now the third one would appear, the fourth drop down would appear, and the fifth would appear, and we can also select something there, right? And then we can see all the results that match all our available ingredients in order of the cocktails that have the most matches. How cool is Glide that you can do this amazing logic by just dragging and dropping and clicking. Life is good. Welcome to the Noco Revolution. Again, if you want to get a copy of this template, just go to grumo.com slash cocktail app. And if you want to learn in much more detail how to create apps without coding, just go to grumo.com, go Glide, to get a 50% discount on my eight hour course where you will learn everything that you ever wanted to in order to create beautiful mobile apps without coding using Glide. Thanks for watching, bye bye.